This morning to round out our show, we're having an important conversation on how the enemy uses doubt, shame, insecurity, apathy, fear, all to keep us from sharing our story, right? So here to tell us how we can better fight back and use what we've experienced to further the kingdom is our bestie, Caitlin Chapel Rogers. Casey, our sister, welcome back. This is a big topic, and I want to touch on the fact, too, um, again, obviously you've said everyone has a story. We mm -hmm. all have something to share. That's a big reason, too, why I even got in this career in general. I mean, mm -hmm. journalism, people are like, how am I going to come up with ideas? And I'm like, every person in this planet has something Literally. to say. Your lady at the grocery store has a story. Yep. People yep. that we just walk with in our everyday lives. Um, curious though, I mean, what was this moment? I mean, your story, you have one too, right? Yeah. I think though there is kind of this debate, do I open up, do I share it, do I even have one? I think I kind of fell more in that category, but yeah. I'm curious, what's, what, what's yours? No, that's so good when you just said, do I even have one? I've had so many people say like, well, I feel like since mine's not like so bad, like I overcame this like huge addiction or this tragedy happened yeah. to me that I don't have a story and that's just not true. That's, that's one of those things that like the enemy wants you to think, mm. well, it's not like big enough, but everyone has one. Mm -hmm. And that's why I actually, you know, we've mentioned before that I used to work here and that's why I wanted to get into news because I love stories. I love hearing people's stories. Yeah. And now I do that through my podcast and people especially say like, well, I don't have a comeback story. And I'm like, no, yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Like we were born into a fallen world. Like you're going to face trials. Like the Bible tells us that mm -hmm. therefore you're going to have comeback stories over and over. And you start to like comb back through your life. And that's what I always encourage people to do is just like go back to the beginning and mm. see like where you started and you'll start to see like, oh my goodness, God did this. And like now I'm here and that happened then and it makes sense now. Mm -hmm. And when you really dig into it and hearing other people's stories helps you think about your own story which means when you tell yours, it encourages other people to do yeah. the same. And that's a big part of it too, because I think sometimes people, I mean, like you mentioned, sometimes they do have these big testimonials yeah, where yeah, it's yeah. like, look at God, but sometimes they're embarrassed to touch back yep. on that part of their lives. Yeah. Right? They, they don't want to say, well, I was in this place because yeah. then they're worried people might have that perception. How, how do we fight through that? I mean, like you said, there's so much yeah. uh, relational experience that mm -hmm. we can have when we open up on our own journey. In what ways have, have you experienced that? Oh, that is such a good question because I recently, sent out, I try to send out weekly emails and yeah. I sent one out and it was like, you know, it's one of those where you like tell a story and you're like, I'm going to go throw up. Like mm. I did not want to tell that story and send and send okay. and literally. And then yeah. like my husband was like, read me what you wrote. And I was like, absolutely not. You can read it in the privacy of your own like room. <laughs> I can't watch your eyes. I can't watch you these words. Yeah. And he knows it. He was there with me, but I'm like, it's just that like, but that is that shame. But when you send it and when you say, I'm going to tell it. And it was like, it could have been silly for someone else, but it's still one of those like that gives me that like uh, in my stomach. Mm -hmm. And actually on the way here, I had a girl message me and say, I read every word. Thank you. I have a similar story. Like it was really about when people see our like ugly, like our worst. Yeah. And she was like, thanks for being brave enough to share it. Like, cause in that moment she thought, oh my gosh, I'm not the only one. I'm not alone. Right. And that's the power. It's like the enemy wants you to think like, you're alone, you're the only person who has ever said those words, done that thing, thought that thought, felt mm. that feeling, you're not. It's impossible. Someone else, even if it's one other person on the planet, has felt that. So when you tell someone like, hey, I went through this thing, there's this like, oh, so did I, me too. Yeah. And that's how we overcome. Like. Revelation 12, 11. Absolutely. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testament. Yeah. And you also too, you quoted another scripture, which I want to remember. First Peter 3, 15 yep. says, be prepared to give an answer, right? To yeah. anyone who asks the reason for your hope. I do think people, and maybe I, I can fall more in this category as well, but because I was on the side of the spectrum of, well, I don't really have I don't one. have one. Yep. Um, I was fortunate enough, so incredibly blessed to grow up with sweet Christian parents. Yeah. I mean, the way you are raising your boys, I mean, there yeah. wasn't really this big, like, my, I mean, certainly my faith is my own and I, and I decided that yeah. but I went to a Christian school. Mm -hmm. My school was so passionate about teaching us the word yep. and even comparing that with other faiths. They weren't going to sugarcoat yeah, it, right? So they good. weren't going to be like, Hey, here's some spoon fed Christianity. No. I mean, I was going to temples of other faiths yeah, and writing reports that. on it. I had to join like a Mormon chat room one that time really, and like have conversations. Yeah. They really wanted to expose us. So, um, but with that, I didn't really feel like I had necessarily had this big turnaround. Yeah. Obviously the Lord works in all of our hearts and we are changed people. Yes. Um, but didn't necessarily think I had this kind of big before and after yeah, I was like once a story this way share, and after yeah. I am. Um, but even just saying that, you know, I think other people can relate and say, well, I'm the same way. And yeah. I think the Lord has used my story, um, in ways again, where I, I was blessed to have, again, I, I want to shout out Charlotte Christian yeah. because of the, it, it was almost like seminary school. I'm yeah, so serious. That's amazing. And I think that there is, you know, we are equipped with tools in that way that now I can have conversations yes. with people 
well, you know, one of my closest friends in college was actually Muslim. And I can say, yes. hey, I've read parts of this Quran. Let's have this conversation. Yep. So the Lord uses so much. And um, you can say to other people like, hey, just because like this, this, and this didn't happen doesn't yeah. mean like, a lot of times someone like you with like thinking they have no story, you've actually had a thousand little comebacks yeah. all along the way. Yeah, very It's like so. this one thing that happened or this relationship that happened. And that's where you start to realize, oh, I do have a story. All those little things, the everyday stories, because we are telling each other, telling ourselves stories all day long. Yeah. And we live out stories every single day. Mm -hmm. And then that culminates and you're like, I do have a story. It's the story of my life and it is my mm -hmm. testimony. Yeah, and the Lord works in all. And again, he sees you and loves you and, mm -hmm. and he wrote it. Like, don't think you yeah, don't have a he's story. The like, that's discrediting him. He's it like, is. I wrote this book and you're saying you don't like you it. Said, so. Yeah, you said that there's nothing mm -hmm. to read. And he's no, like, no, no. Like, open it we, up and yeah, take a look. Very yeah. much so. Caitlin's sister, we love you. You're so wise in so many ways. You mentioned that email list and I don't want to throw it back at you're like, wait, go read it, but don't read it, read it, but don't <laughs> no, read no, it. No. Um, but you've got an email list. You have a great podcast. Tell us where we can keep up and just have more great conversations with you. Yeah. Head on over to my Instagram at Caitlin Chapel Rogers and you'll find my email list. Sign up for that. The Comeback Couch podcast. Last episode of this season is next <gasps> week. So yeah. Wait, I didn't realize. So and it's the 50th kinda... episode. Oh, my word. Isn't that so crazy? Not actually, so, because look at God. Of course, he worked those numbers out that way. So a little summer break, maybe, little and then we'll break. run it back. Back to the fall. Yes. Summer break, Stay hanging tuned. out with my boys, but you can go binge of all course. 50 episodes and rewatch them literally all. 50 stories from 50 people. So. Amazing. Caitlin, we love you so, so much. Again, thank you for just being vulnerable and honest and real and just a sweet sister. sister. I love having uh, you on the yes. show. So love you guys. You. I need a shirt that says TVL bestie. Girl. That's who she is. TV I love to intro her. I'm like, she's our girl, Caitlin Chapel Rogers. And you guys know if you know.